We have gifts that we have inherited. We have gifts that we have learned and cultivated. But Paul is talking to Timothy about the gift of God that was given to Timothy by God's own hand. It came wrapped up already in baby Timothy. But God gave the gift and Timothy grew into it and Paul affirmed it by the laying on of his hands. Some of us have gifts that are secret because we cannot find mainstream or religious environments to use the gifts in. Perhaps we are not speakers, we are not singers, we are not administrators, we are not church cooks, how am I doing with that? We don't fit into what might probably or possibly be something that we can use in and around congregations or in and around faith-based organizations, but we have artistic passions and we have purpose and we have gifts and skills that ought to be brought to be part of people who look to God for help and for strength. But we just haven't figured out, as religion, how to make it work. I think that's a task that we need to lean in on. Because we all should be able to bring our gifts and skills and passion and purpose somehow in this particular climate to the work of good, of God, and of justice. What I know for a fact is that this time needs all of our gifts. Apparently, something or some string of things had caused Timothy's gifts to be diminished. The gifts were there, but they were not at their full potential. The gifts were there, but they were asleep and perhaps laying fallow. So Paul said to Tim, stir it up. Stir up your gifts. Activate your gifts. Bring into fruition your gifts. And perhaps as we're beginning a new year, a better rendering of this epistle, this letter, this email from Paul to Timothy would be perhaps my task in this most particular and peculiar of times is to be Paul to some Timothy who is here today, or to be Paul to some Timothy that is in the mirror for me today. So Paul said to Timothy, stir up your gifts, and the metaphor literally means to kindle anew the flames of fire in your gifts. Let me say it another way, to shake the ashes off of your God-given fire that is already in you that somebody has dumbed down. How am I dealing with that? Right? Ashes hinder the flame of the way that we should use our gifts. Ashes. Life circumstances can dumb down our passion and our power for ministry and justice Age has a tendency of telling us that we're done or about done. The opinions of people can hinder us. And sometimes just weariness can make us feel that our fire has ceased to exist. So here's the question, my beloved, today. How do we rekindle our fire? Now, I love church camping trips. And one of my traditional tasks in church camping trips is to build a bonfire at the end of the day. When the cool of the evening begins, you know, you can get tricked on the camping trip because it's warm in the day. And then over in the night, it can be as cold as it was warm in the day. So we build a bonfire at the end of the day and then the cool of the evening would begin when these warm days turn quickly into cold nights. I had the task also of preparing the open pit for barbecue and for s'mores and for miscellaneous hot dog roasting. And I have subsequently had a great deal of experience building fires over the years. And I have wonderful memories of our times of fellowship and kinship around those fires. But can I tell you that building and sustaining fires require active work? There are some things that have to be done when a fire dies down in order to build it up again. 
First thing I heard in a reggae song years ago was said, stir it up. Anybody know it? Yeah. Okay. Stir it up. You cannot stand off from a fire that has died down and commanded to flame up. Flame up. The fire will continue to look at you like you've lost your mind. Flame up. Now that's not the way that it's done. You must pay attention to it, but even more than that, you must get involved with it. To get a dying fire to come to life, you have to move it around. You have to assess it. You have to see what is there. You have to determine what is needed, what is missing. You have to move the hot embers together to get them prepared. Knock the ashes off to reveal the hot spots. You have to pay attention. You have to challenge yourself. You have to encourage yourself. You have to check your motivation. You have to be careful about who you friend. Come on. Search around internally, externally, honestly for your gifts and acknowledge your weaknesses and ask yourself the hard questions. What motivates you now? Who are you jealous of? What makes you quit when you quit? Identify your strengths, identify your weaknesses and respect them. And no matter how unusual they may seem, they are uniquely a part of the package with which you were born. We should be knowledgeable about our own gifting, our own skills. We should be able to articulate what we're good at. How about that? I don't know how to make a good pound cake from scratch. But I know how to tell when it's good. <laughs> I'm an extremely gifted taste tester. Anybody? <laughs> Don't allow anyone to define your gifts for you. You must be able to articulate your gifts and then cultivate the gifts. Hone them. Stay sharp and ready for use and stay available because somebody somewhere needs exactly what you are gifted to do and be. And then the second thing I learned is that you have to add fuel to it. You have to feed a fire to keep it burning. It will not do to build it up big and roaring and then go off somewhere and stay, thinking it will indefinitely continue by itself. You add your fuel carefully. You add your kindling first, and when the kindling is burning well, then you bring the large, heavy logs. Position the logs strategically so oxygen can help the fire. Too much little kindling produces a shallow, short-lived fire. Too many big logs added too quickly, the fire will smolder, suffocate, and die. Too much inspiration without education is short-lived and temporary. Too much education without inspiration is oppressive and lacks effervescence. Too much education and inspiration without spirituality tends to make us haughty, come on now, and full of ourselves and often useless to help particularly young people who are coming along. Some wood, like pine, is porous, full of resin, it burns fast, makes a lot of noise, crackles and pops up a storm, and then dies. Some wood, like oak, is dense and seasoned, but it takes it a while to get it going. But once it gets going, it gets going. Be patient. Try different approaches, but find your balance. What am I saying to you? There is no excuse not to be involved and engaged in the time in which we live. Everyone has something to bring. Unique, different, powerful, and needed in this time. Keep your focus on God and the fact that your gift is from God. And what is yours is yours. Keep offering it up for God's direction and for purpose for your gift. And finally this, keep watch over it. If I don't know anything about fire, I've got this. If a fire is to burn continually and consistently, it must be attended to. 
If you let it go out, you just have to keep starting over and over again. Anybody know about that? You have to move from Texas to Oklahoma, from Oklahoma <laughs> to Ohio, from Ohio to California. I'm going to go from California to Chicago, from Chicago to New York. Come on, they start a new fire every time we go. If we don't attend to it, it will go out and we'll have to restart it over and over. Treat the gift of God like the Olympic flame, which continues to burn and is carried from one Olympic event to another. Keep it lit so you can share it. Keep it lit so you can share it everywhere and anywhere because anywhere you go with the holy flame of God, that is a temple. Starbucks can be a temple. Thanks be, thanks be to God. Costco can be a temple. Target across the street can be a temple. Take your flame with you everywhere you go. Keep it lit and share it. Appreciate the fact that the original flame, the Olympic flame of the Spirit of God came from God. And God is making you now responsible to steward over. Don't take it for granted. Treat it like it's precious and priceless. And determine what you can and can't do by how the thing affects your fire. There are some people that I've had to unfriend because of the way they affect my fire. There are some kinfolks I can only talk to from time to time because of how they affect my fire. There's some old school religious beliefs I once had that I had to evolve from because of how they affect my fire. My lenses, when I read the scripture, have changed completely. They've evolved entirely because of how I used to read affected my fire. What is God saying now? God has a tough time speaking to us because put a back cover on the book and said God wouldn't speak again. And that is what has affect our fire. Mm. Determine who can and who can't be in and around your close presence now because of how they may affect your fire and your purpose. And let me tell you something else. There may be some things that other folks can do but you cannot, not any longer. Don't be afraid to say, no, I don't do that. And I can't go there because my focus is on the purpose that God has placed in me and that will diminish my fire and extinguish my light. Now, use your fire, use your light because fire has purpose. We tend to take better care of it when we use it. Fire in the hearth, in the homes of my ancestors, in the deep south, was a place where the entire family received warmth. The place of gathering, because at the end of a cold and mean and racist filled in different day, everyone's heart was turned toward home and hearth. They loved the home and hearth because a good meal could be cooked there. Hot water for warm drinks were prepared there. Hot water for bathing and washing was warm there. The rocking chair was often right in front of the fireplace. The fire even produced light so the family, those that could read, could read scripture. Essentially, your gift, your flame, that needs to be stirred up within you is not for you alone. You're stirring it up to create an aura, a place, a reality around yourself that welcomes. Your gift was given for you to share it. Use it. Operate in it as often as God leads because there is much more left to do and there is much more from where that gift came from. So take this with you. God laid the foundation for the gifts to come forth. And if there ever was a time 
We need everyone to be all in. Bring all of your gifts. This is not a time for justice people to retreat and to hide and just wait and see what happens next. Our children need us. Our planet needs us. Our government needs us. And everyone has to bring their gifts and skills. You gotta go up in the attic and get your Birkenstocks and your signs and come on down. You may have to get a pink hat, come on now. And come on down. Everyone has to bring their gifts and skills. Get a rainbow church fan and come on down. Why? Come on down to say something, to sing something, to write something, to protest something, to share something, to vote for something, to make your presence mean something to your friend circle, to your family, to your neighborhood. No one is going to be left out. Every fire of justice must burn now in this time and in this moment. Don't leave it to the public speakers. Private speakers change people often more than public speakers. There is something that God did not give us. God did not give us cowardice. Fear is torment, and it paralyzes the fire, it paralyzes the gift of God by waving the specter of failure over us. Fear. Fear makes us competitive and it stifles our ability to have a generous spirit. Fear says, will I be appreciated? Will my fire be accepted? Am I as good as other people? Am I as powerful as other people? This is why we have to shift our motivation. Paul said to the saints, and all you do, do it as unto God. Your focus, when it is less on failure, you offer your gifts to God first. And we are different in terms of how we do. And I'll say it this way. You don't come into Chitlin's late in life. If you don't know, you don't know. But ask the chitlin eater, and they will tell you a little bit about chitlins. If you don't start on chitlins, you don't just come into chitlins. That's the way it works. It's kind of like haggis. Come on, talk to me. And blood sausage. And I can't do chin kimchi too good. Especially if I smell it before I taste it. You understand what I'm saying? Some things you don't come into late in life. We are all different. That means we are differently able, which means we are called often to those who we are called to. Hallelujah. So at all you do, don't use any of those feelings of ineptness to cause you to feel, us to feel that it is not time for us to be on fire. Let your focus be less on failure and let your focus be on God. Jesus ministered to God on the top of mountains, then came down from the mountain and ministered to the leaders, and then he and the leaders together went to talk to the people. He spent time practicing the presence of God. God has laid the foundation for our gifts to come forth by the one who gives to us first. And what has God given us? My sister read it a moment ago. God first has not given us a spirit of fear. That didn't come from God. God has given us power. God has given us love. And God has given us a sound mind. God has given us courage. God has given us sensitivity and good sense. God has given us strength. God has given us charity, and God has given us sobriety. Why do I leave with this? Because power, courage, and strength alone can be devastating. Selfish, controlling, and destructive. Love, sensitivity, and charity can be sentimental and codependent and misunderstood and misdirected. Self-discipline and good sense and sobriety can be self-righteous and haughty 
and academic and analytical, but working together. Power, love, and a sound mind. Working together. These gifts are the anointing that God has given to us to take our place in carrying the flame. Burn like you're the only one who can make a difference. Move toward what it is that spirit has placed within you. Put your hand, your heart, your voice, your income, your ability, your love, your depth, your education into bringing the kingdom of God to the earth. And for all of us that are waiting for God to come and blow it all to hell, I say to people, that is not the prayer that God told us to pray. <laughs> thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy realm come on earth as it is in heaven. I challenge you today by the vicarious and distant laying on of hands. Stir up the gifts. Stir up the gifts. God bless you is my prayer.